Hey everybody, welcome, welcome back, depending on if you've been here before. We are getting ready to start a new docu-series. This one is Sons of Sam. That's not the full title, hold on. The Sons of Sam, A Descent into Darkness. And this show is one of the limited series on Netflix. It's the... Son, the Son of Sam case grew into a lifelong obsession for journalist Mari Te uh, Terry. Mari Terry? Mari? Who became convinced that the murders were linked to a satanic cult. So we're going to give this show a watch. Yeah. This is Purdy. If you have not met her, she is my... 20, 20 and a half year old kitty. She has bad arthritis. And she constantly has to be touching me. So you will see her all the time. And I'll try to remember to introduce the others as they show up. Um, at any rate. Uh, so based on this description, I'm not sure how much of this is going to be accurate. Um, especially with it being made into a TV show, are they going to give one perspective or are they going to give the perspective and then the facts or all facts or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And if you've watched um, any of the other docuseries with me, then you kind of understand where I'm coming from with that. And actually one of them wasn't a docuseries, but it was um, fairly accurate. And that was um, Waco. Uh, done Chernobyl, uh, which is kind of a docu-series, done more movie style rather than interview and that kind of thing. This feels like it's going to come across as interview, um, although it might be more of a movie style. So we will see. There's 10 episodes, I believe. There's four episodes. <laughs> So it's going to be nice and short. I don't know where I got 10 from. So 10 episodes and the litter box decided to run. Um, so we will see how this goes. Since it's only four episodes, that kind of tells me more that it's going to be more of an interview style than as a TV uh, movie type of thing. However, Chernobyl was only five episodes, so it could be more that style. I don't really know anything about the Sons of Sam or the Son of Sam other than I know the name. I've heard the name. I haven't done any studying on the issue, so all of this will be brand new for me, um, whereas I had a little bit of an inkling on an inkling on all the others. So I will try to remember to speak up. I'm not always good about external monologue on what I'm thinking while I'm watching something. So I try to go ahead and speak. A lot of times it brings up memory type stuff. And so I'll share any memories that come up, um, but I'll also share my thoughts as well. And Takes her a while to get situated. And uh, I get distracted easily. And I don't know what's going on with my light. I haven't changed my light setting, but I look like I am a ghost. And I don't know why. I'm not a ghost. I have been standing for the last three hours. Yeah, about three hours. Cutting up watermelon. Oh, there. I look normal again. It's the webcam, so it kind of sucks. That's all right. I get sidetracked easily. <laughs> I will try to remember my external monologue, and I'm not really, I mean, if you watch my American Horror Story reactions, watch my Chernobyl, well, I do a lot of crying. I do cry a lot, but... <laughs> As far as shock and surprise and all that kind of stuff, I I don't really do that a lot on my face. I'm 
I'm not good at poker, but I I don't tend to lot, have a lot of reaction. And part of that, I think, is just my training. And for those of you that might not know, my history is in mental health. And all in my classes, they talked about, you know, you're going to hear situations from people. You need not do the surprise face <laughs> type of thing. And so I think that's why I don't have a lot of shock and surprise in my face. That being said, I do sometimes have it. Even over the phone, I had somebody the other day and I was like, really? <laughs> so the training doesn't always come through. So sometimes the shock and surprise comes through. If I jump at something, I'll try to say something out loud so that you know that I've jumped because I don't it's not always noticeable. So, yeah. With that, and knowing nothing about the Son of Sam other than the name. Oh, and I think they talked about Son of Sam in Mind Hunter. Um, I forget his real name, uh, but I think they talked about him in Mind Hunter. And I think they also had him in American Horror Story Hotel. I think one of the characters was him. But that's been so long since I've seen it. I'm not positive on that. So, All right. She's settled. I'm settled. I'm actually dressed. For those of you that haven't watched me before, oftentimes I'm in my PJs. <laughs> so I'm actually dressed so you can see pretty from time to time. <sighs> Let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's get started. I received three boxes from an investigative journalist named Maury Terry. Maury, okay. Maury spent his life delving into the darkest corners of true crime. Yet one case continued to haunt him. It was one of the most terrifying crimes in New York City history. And of course seen that picture before. He is David Berkowitz. David Berkowitz. For many New Yorkers, the nightmare was over can't remember if I remember the name David Berkowitz or not. Sounds like he's got some Jewish history, though. These people performed rituals. They were drinking the blood. This organization was big. That was um, uh, the lady. She was part of Manson's clan, wasn't she? Oh, it even says David Berkowitz in the little description thingy. Was real. Is there a link between the Manson okay. killings? And the son of Sam killed So I wasn't wrong about the lady. And I might be shouting, and I hope I'm not. Against David Berkowitz. He was convinced that he was right. Can you prove that he wasn't? Oh, that's right. He says he's innocent. Many years. So I can't remember what show it was. I can't remember if it was a TV show or if it was another docuseries or what. Or if it was a TV show based on true story stuff or, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know if it was American Horror Story or if it was Mind Hunter or, or one of the other things. But if, if I'm remembering the case correctly, David Berkowitz has claimed innocence and has always claimed innocence, I believe. I thought I remembered what TV show it was, but... I can't remember now. <laughs> it's right on the tip of my tongue. So that might be why this journalist went down the rabbit hole of the satanic cult. And I'm assuming we're going to get the the path that led him to that. But, but that might be why. One of the reasons. I really do hope this is not drawn out as long as the story on Lisa Lamb, Elisa Lamb was. Where they, they could have... Boiled it down to three episodes. Hopefully it's the pacing of um, Richard Ramirez. Yet little did I know my curiosity would soon lure me. Into Pictures look like they're from a post-apocalyptic period. I was two years old. Now the police and firemen's unions in New York are calling it Fear City. I'm confused. If... It had become known, if it had gone from Fun City to Fierce City, 
and you've got all this crime and death and all this going on, why would you cut back on the police force? Blasted through the car window, Donna was killed instantly. My wife comes screaming in the hall. Recorded it off oh, of sure. a VHS tape. I, I yelled to Rosemary, I said, you stop the car, get out of here. About was she dead? As long as I'm home by seven, my mother will never know I'm out. And he, he his answer to me was, son, he was shot in the head. You're not going home. Mm. But they usually resemble the person. Is there that was ever like, something which is completely different? Not often. Not often. Uh, I think. Not often means that sometimes. And that's the first time I ever saw one that large. It took me back a little bit. This is the. So is a 44. Are they all the same casings? At this point in our investigation, uh, we have no reason to believe that the cases are connected. I did ask earlier if they had the same casings um, at all of the thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same shoot or anything. And I forget when they started being able to do forensic to be able to tell when the same shell came from the same gun. I just know it's forensics past that. I don't know what it's called, but um, I don't know when they started having that capability. I would think 70s they had it, but I don't know for sure. We have an age pattern. They all seem to be young, young adults. We've got male and female. We got them all around the same area, like all around New York City. So it's not like it's happening in different states or different cities, although New York City is huge all in of itself. But Richard Ramirez, he was all over California, well, surrounding areas of L.A., and actually did some up in Northern California. So we don't have that yet. That could be coming. I can't recall if I was ever told if it was in other areas. This is Buddy. She's feral, which is why she does that when I go to pet her. See, I'm beautiful. I just like to be seen. I don't like to be touched. Unless you're going to scratch my back. that fur <laughs> but she likes to sit up there and look beautiful okay back to the show the ballistics detective called okay he said he had a match so that answers that and Mari could tell you the artist the name of the song who the record company was, I can't and what number it was on the charts at the current day I, I can't what I had for breakfast Mari could rename every statistic about the sports teams that he followed. See, I don't get that either. He, had that. he left a letter that was addressed to me. And he signed it, Mr. son of Joe Sam. Morelli, Queen's Homicide. I'm deeply hurt by you calling me a women hater. I am not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. When Father Sam gets drunk, he gets mean. I am the killer Biazawal, um, and I can't say that word, never have been able to say it. What year did Bohemian Rhapsody come out? Because I don't think, the reason why I'm asking is because I don't think the name Biazawal, can't say it right, was popular in the U.S. until um, that song. And my understanding is that Freddie got it from his father's faith. I can't remember. Is his father Turkish or Hungarian? I don't know what the faith was, whatever the faith was in that area. But... Um, it wasn't Christianity. I know that. And I know there was a lot of debate over if that's what 
that name meant in the song or if he just used it because it sounded cool. So, um, yeah. But I wonder if that's where he got it from. The language in that letter Diesel I've never heard of or seen before. This is the equivalent of sex. In an analytic sense, symbolic sense, the shooting is the orgasm and the and the revolver itself, the gun itself, of course, is the How is he getting that as sexual? In a letter to the because there's an addition that we can put this in. Which is kind of what the killer wants. Response. You know, they talk about that in I did a risk and threat assessment training. And one of the things I talked about is how putting the names and telling their story, for lack of a better way of putting it, of these killers, whether they're serial killers or mass shooters or uh, co-worker violence, you know, what, whatever type of violence they're committing, naming them and naming what they did kind of puts them down in infamy and they um a lot of them not all but a lot of them have this narcissistic part to them and that's part of what ends up failing them in the end is that narcissist narcissism the narcissistic traits of them that wanting that attention um, so the newspaper, by publishing the letter, did exactly what the killer wanted. Now he's getting all this attention. Whereas playing ball with law enforcement and holding off on publishing the letter might have helped in capturing them sooner. Uh, might not have, but it might have. And, you know, so you have to weigh... Um, the situations but then you know if, if you work with law enforcement a lot of times they'll say you can have exclusive rights or whatever um, once the situation is resolved sometimes I won't say a lot of times sometimes <laughs> so I get wanting to sell newspapers and tv shows and all this kind of stuff I also get where it just makes matters worse sometimes. These rapist and suffocator of young girls. All clues rapist. Playing a deadly game. So is he indicating that there's situations he hasn't been named in? Where the press took a hand in not reporting the news necessarily, but creating the news. What I know with one of them is the flames and the rioters ran wild. As the police and firefighters docked bricks and bottles. I what prompted the, the riot? Stand. Donna Laurie, the first shooting we now knew had been on the 29th. So the idea is he's going to kill somebody on the anniversary. Uh, was it a red herring? The young kids may go, love his lanes. We had an awful lot of cops on the street. And nothing happened. Nope. You have some ID, maybe? Yeah. There was a brief chase after a report of a driver acting suspicious. It's still saying nothing happened. We're going to spot him on the street. And uh, after a while, you, get, you, you actually get weary. And meanwhile, they enjoy all this chaos that they're creating. It was a horror. Stacy Moskowitz, 20 years old, blonde. Robert Violante also changed up his pattern. Shot twice in the head as they sat in their car in the Brooklyn section of New York. A year and two days after the first shooting, son of Sam hit for the first time. Was it a 44? Brooklyn. It was actually a sigh of relief when ballistics experts confirmed that kind of looks like Geraldo. Made by the son of Sam. Uh, we have uh, people, more people this time who saw the killer than at any time in the in the past. I've never gotten the sketches. They always seem so different for me. Right. The time period is getting shorter in between. After the shooter went in his neighborhood. So I called Yonkers PD to find out if they knew anything. And Wait, I missed. Why was he going through the violations? That this is the guy we're looking for. I went back to my inspector and he said, well, how did it go? And it's I said, her I father is Sam. Break in the car 
without a search warrant. And then they go into the glove. And the guns are 44. Get out of the car, put your hands on the roof. Yes, but nothing's David going Nicholas. to stand because and they searched the car was... illegally. With me. Yep. So they searched the car illegally. There was a butt of a gun, but we don't know if the gun was a 44. I'm assuming it was. They get this letter. They might have said it was a 44, but I missed it because I was talking. Um, there's a letter. Is the letter in the same handwriting? Because it could be somebody who's just wanting to claim the infamy as well. It might not be the actual person who was doing the job. So the district attorneys of the respective counties that have to prosecute. I feel like they haven't done enough. If you want to get pictures of the man, or we're not being given enough information. Like how thoroughly have they connected everything? Police lab said this was the gun used in the most recent son of Sam slaying. Okay. And uh, he didn't resemble the recent set of sketches. When I walked in, the more the thin face. I know we had the confession, we had the ballistics, all that matched. But all this was public information. So far, everything that they're sharing is public information. So if he's a copycat, you know, did they compare that gun to the other shootings? They said the last one, but he could have been a copycat. Plus, she was blonde. She wasn't a brunette with long hair. She has a blonde with short hair. Are there other differences? We haven't heard on if they've compared the handwriting in the letter found in his car to the other letters. I mean, this is, first of all, this is only the first episode. <laughs> so, but I don't know how much of it they're going to go off on a tangent with the reporter who thinks it's linked to the satanic cults. So not sure there. And I was thinking... I cannot remember where I heard it, so I don't know if this is true or not. But I'm thinking he's the one that was hearing a demonic dog talk to him. And that was part of his confession. But then later he was like, why would you believe somebody who was saying they were listening to a dog talk or something like that? I might be mixing up my horror stories. <laughs> That's very possible. But I feel like... I feel like the, the way they're presenting this, at least, the officers said, okay, we've got this, 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 and this, that's it, but didn't delve into it deeper because it, right now it sounds like it could be copycat, especially if the bullet does or the gun doesn't match the other uh, shell casings from uh, any of the previous shootings. I sit down at cross from our goods and uh, I didn't know what to expect but is that the journalist that reverberated around the world it's all over how do you feel oh fantastic we're so relieved the whole thing there's going to be a killing while he's in custody my gut was telling me there was more to this demon dog story so I was a little right on remembering that correctly a few days later a friend gave me a photo of John Carr Putting the photo and the Looks more like the sketch. Look at that hair. Those are definitely some good questions to ask. Rather than going straight for David Berkowitz. Or leaving it at just David Berkowitz. Oh, I feel much safer walking the streets of New York. Much safer, you know, I can go out at night, go to the discotheques. There's going to be another death. So that was the end of episode one. Some vague memories were coming back to me with the demon dog. I still think later on he claims innocence, um, but they haven't said that yet. I still have the same questions that I was asking there towards the end. Did the bullet or did the gun match the bullets at the other crime scenes, not just the last one? Hold on. I don't remember. My eyes are itching. I need to take the contacts out. Look at that face. You can resist that face. Do they do a forensic comparison of the letters? Which, so, eyewitness 
testimony is proven, um, there's not a a hundred percent match you're not going to get. We usually remember stuff incorrectly. And I remember that in part of our training when I worked at a sheets a long time ago, when we're in that moment, we sometimes get the colors wrong. We get the skin tone wrong. We get the eye color wrong, you know, stuff like that. So, so I'll agree with what the officer said in that eyewitness testimony is not always 100%, but usually there's some truth in there. I'll go with that. Same thing with handwriting comparison. Um, you, there's not, it's not 100% accurate, but it at least can give you an idea because most folks tend to have a certain same pattern. Me, I don't. If somebody tried to forge my signature, they'd be able to get away with it. <laughs> I think my signature is different every single time. <laughs> But um, most folks tend to have the same pattern. I, knew, I used to be able to forge my dad's signature, but he changed it. So <laughs> I never did use it as a forgery. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard to believe now that I said that. But I used to practice writing his name just in case I ever needed to write it. Um, I don't know why, because... We lived with mom most of the time, and she was the disciplinarian. Dad wasn't, so I don't know why I practiced using dad's name. Mom's I could never do. It was too fancy. So I want to know about the letter. Did they compare it to the other letters? Um, and not only the handwriting, but the, the pattern of the writing. You can get a feel for if somebody wrote the same letter. So, for example, I had a stalker, and the stalker wrote wrote two letters that they sent in the mail. I'm not going to say where they ended up at. They didn't end up at my house, but um, they wrote two letters. And one was in cursive and one was in print. And... When I was uh, showing them to the sheriff, um, he explained that even though one was print and one was cursive, they could still be compared. They would look at the the way the person spoke in the letters because our writing speech is different from our speaking speech a lot of times. But they would compare it that way and content and all that kind of stuff. So they could still say if it was the same person or not, even though one did cursive and one did print. So I'd like to know more about the letter comparison. I would like to know about the gun and the other crime scenes. I would like to know why the woman in the last murder had blonde short hair rather than long brown hair or dark hair. I think they said all of the other women were dark hair, right? Or was it just most of them? And some of them is hard to tell because it's black and white photos. So it, they looked kind of dirty blonde, light brown. So I'm, I'm not sure about those, but we'd have to go off of what the police report said for their hair color. I would say those are my two biggest questions and the police seem to wrap it up so quickly at least the way they're presenting it I, I would hope when somebody is looking at a crime that they would sit down and say okay here's all the evidence we have for what is some of the evidence against it being this person is it possible still that somebody else was possibly the perpetrator. I did. I still don't know. I, I went back and played it a couple of times. Um, I still don't know how the summons got involved. Did they say that someone served a summons to a yellow car? It wasn't a VW. I, I somehow missed how that summons came about. And I don't know if it's because the show just presented it real quickly or if there really was something to it. So I don't know about that. 
at any rate, so I said I have questions still, and hopefully they go into that a little bit, but um, we'll leave it at that. There was something else I was going to tell y'all, but I forget now. I will say, um, once this show ends, I'll be starting a new one, so if you are not part of my Discord and you want to say on what I watch next, the Discord is free. The link is down below. And uh, when I post the next poll, you can have a say in what I watch next. <laughs> so it, only one person voted on this show. They got their wish. So um, if you want to say in my next show, uh, please join the Discord so that you can have a vote in that. I do have an Instagram as well. And depending on how fast I get it put together... <laughs> I have a Facebook page for the acrylic pouring. I'm keeping it strictly for the acrylic pouring. So if you're interested in that, you can join. One other thing. Uh, my friend, my acquaintance, I don't know if he considers us friends, uh, but we went to high school together. He has a show on YouTube called Unsolved No More. And so after I finish the Son of Sam, Sons of Sam, I will watch his review and see what he says and what he points out and that sort of thing because uh, he has that episode. So if you are interested in watching that before my review, which I highly encourage you watch his whole video because I'm only going to have bits and pieces, I will have the link in the description below so that you can watch it ahead of time. I think that's it that I need to let you all know. So thank you for joining me on this one and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.